um, the science podcast audience. So the question might be, um, or maybe if you are already doing a podcast or a listener yourself, which most of you are, um, the question of who is listening, what and why. And um, I think it's really helpful to think about the general audience market and who's already into podcasting and who you can address. Um, um, I think it really helps to, to get an understanding um, of what you might want to do uh, with your own podcasts. So if um, when we take a look at the overall, overall podcast used, um, this is a study from 2009, so it's not very recent data, um, but gives you an impression how how the uh, German market compares to the US. So in Germany, um, they found out that 70% of the population, 16 years and older, listen to podcasts monthly. And if you compare that to the use in the US, we are like <laughs> somewhere here, um, comparable to the data in the US uh, from 2015. So. The German market um, has seen a start uh, growth um, in the last years, but it's not comparable, so to speak, to the US. We are catching up um, because the German podcast audience is, is actually growing, especially among the younger audiences, 14 to 90, uh, uh, 29 years old. About 40 million people in Germany listen to podcasts or radio on demand at least once a month. And uh, 12 to 20%, depending on the data you uh, look at, uh, listen to podcasts at least once a week. And the daily reaches 3 to 6%. So daily listening is um, not as high at the moment, but uh, people are listening more and more regularly. If we take a look at the socio-demographics, um, then you can see that the balance between men and women, I'm sorry, this is a binary, <laughs> a binary uh, data, um, the balance between uh, women and men is quite good because often we see studies showing that um, men are more keen to listening to podcasts. So women, especially younger women, are catching up, which is really cool, I think, especially for science-related topics. And if you take a look at the age, then I already mentioned that. So the main focus lies here on the younger audiences. But with formats like coronavirus update, uh, a lot more more older people are um, catching up with listening but they might be more interested in one topic for example and one thing i always find a bit critical <laughs> i have to admit is that uh, the education formal education level indicates that um, podcast listeners are highly educated and that uh, that people with formal uh, lower formal education levels are not so much into podcasting um, still. So there's a huge difference, right? And maybe um, science podcasts, or when you think about a concept for a science uh, podcast, you might want to uh, think about, <laughs> um, yeah, maybe finding cool new ways to to draw people into the topics and not, um, yeah, preaching to the already knowledgeable and interested audience. Um, also interesting because um, Christian mentioned that, um, where do people listen to podcasts? In Germany, it's really, um, yeah, Spotify has <laughs> the upper hand. So they already conquered the audience quite well, especially the 14 to uh, 29 years old are mostly um, using music streaming services or YouTube, crazy, right? YouTube um, and other video platforms to listen to podcasts. This is really uh, weird, but um, that's uh, obviously the case. Podcast website and apps uh, are not so um, not uh, used as much, but this really depends on the kind of format you have. So um, maybe if you are doing a specific niche uh, niche content, then people from uh, who are more familiar with podcasting will will listen to you there. But the general audience in Germany is listening more on these streaming services and also the websites provide and apps provided by radio stations, which are not open to every podcast, right? So this is something 
um, to keep in mind. If we take a look at um, the topics people are listening to, then we see that science is and always has been a very popular podcast topic. So science and technology is among the top two, uh, top three topics. If you ask people, what are you listening to? And there are also other st studies indicating that science and research, uh, knowledge and science, science education, science and health are really popular topics um, and always among the top um, top topics uh, people like to listen to. And uh, maybe one insight why people are listening to podcasts. Um, I think, um, yeah, you can you ask yourself, why do I listen? But if you ask people, they, they often say that spoken word is a better way and more interesting way to convey content. It's uh, full of variation. Um, it's a nice way to, um, and time independent way to get information and entertainment. So people are really appreciating the independence they have when it comes to um, get, getting into um, information, which is maybe brought to them in an entertaining way. And I think one, one of the uh, strengths for science podcasts as well, and this is confirmed if you ask people um, about their motivations, is um, the top answer for them is I listen to certain podcasts mainly for the depth and detail with which certain topics are covered. And this is, I think, uh, really important and uh, relevant for science podcasts, especially if they have very complex issues they are talking about. So. Uh, don't be afraid that your topic might might be too nerdy or too complicated for people. They actually appreciate um, that uh, complicated or complex issues are laid out in detail for them. This is also confirmed by a podcasting study or science podcast study uh, where they study two Brazilian science podcasts. Um, for one, they confirm that Podcasts, uh, science podcasts are highly demanded among people with a higher formal education, in this case, especially men. So there might be some uh, imbalance there in more affluent regions, so more urban, for example, and not so much rural uh, regions. And that the listeners actually seem to identify with the host. So if you have young scholars, then maybe younger people tend to listen to them than compared to professors or more uh, mature uh, researchers, for example, which is, I think, uh, interesting if you think about conceptualizing. Um, what is very popular among um, the, at least for these two science pods, the, uh, the listeners, they like informal speech and humor and that uh, the podcast host could draw connections to everyday life and pop culture. So this is a good way to opening science for a lay audience. But, as, uh, but there's also this uh, trick of a trade that humor based on in-jokes or who are based on certain memes, for example, can also be a bit excluding. Right. If, if people don't know the references, then um, they might feel ex excluded. And um, what's also interesting that uh, the study found that longer formats between 60 and 90 minutes are preferred, which is a nightmare for <laughs> every science, maybe not science journalism, uh, but for journalists, because what is this so long? <laughs> this is a complaint you always get. Um, however, maybe for people who are not so much into podcasting already, maybe it's also could also be interesting to provide more shorter formats as well. And um, when it comes uh, also to a motivation or to something which is important to listeners, it's this uh, sociability of listening. Um, Birch and Whitecam, they did a study and called this podologues. So they say podcasts are regarded not only as a valuable source of foreign uh, scientific information by listeners, um, blogs and forums can also act as public spaces for audience members to share knowledge, develop their own ideas about science, and provide feedback. So I think this uh, plays also in the idea um, where you host your podcast. 
because if you only host maybe on Spotify, there is no, no way people can socialize around your format, right? Because there's no comment section and there's nothing there where they can talk to each other. But for, for a lot of people, this is interesting or is a nice way to build a community. And a nice <laughs> a depiction of how it feels to listen to podcasts comes uh, from Reddit. So, um, yeah, the, I don't know about you, but I often have that feeling that I have a connection to the host and I feel, feel like I'm being part of the group and being like engaged uh, into hearing um, what they think about certain things and what their opinions are. And I think this, uh, this uh, picture really <laughs> depicts that very well. Um, and I think uh, this is all, all, also something you should keep in mind. Um, podcasts are not so much like uh, maybe radio shows or something like that. They are social media, right? They facilitate the emergence and bonding of communities. Um, they provide occasions for knowledge uh, exchange and opinion formation, right? People want to discuss um, their ideas about science or want to exchange information, for example. And I think um, they also include listeners to various means um, because there are rather low hierarchies between the host and the audience. And uh, how you can make use of that is part of my third section here. But I wanted to give you the uh, chance to maybe ask a question. No questions, Christian? There have been a couple of comments um, regarding RSS and it being hard to understand to some at least, which is kind of, um, that was back when you were talking about um, formal education and podcasts uh, and among podcast listeners. Um, also some back and forth with regards to videos to be more, let's say capable as a medium to display or explain quite complicated content. Um, but I'd encourage those who have questions to speak up themselves, I think. I don't so, I'm uh, happy I, to be your megaphone, but please do. Sorry. Uh, a, um, I have a very brief question. So I'm not, uh, I love podcasts, but uh, I don't think I have a very uh, you know, extensive experience in listening to science podcasts. So one question would be, do you think that I was, uh, based on that data that you were showing, a study on like essentially the guy I was looking at, um, or the, the person who was looking into uh, hard science podcasts, do you think it's the case that hard science podcasts are more frequent or they sort of dominate the science podcasting uh, field? Or is that actually there's a lot of humanities and social science podcasts, it's just that he was not looking into those podcasts? Yeah, that's really hard to say because he was not looking into that. So it's really hard to compare. But I'd say uh, hardcore humanities podcasts, philosophy podcasts, for example, or sociology, they are a bit more rare, I'd say. Often you find mixed formats, right, especially in science journalism. So one week they will pick up on rocket science and in the other episode they will uh, pick up a philosophical question, right? Um, there are some mixed um, mixed uh, formats like that, but I'd say, um, yeah, science or hard, si hard science, so to speak, formats are a bit more, um, bit more out there, right? But uh, I, I don't think, uh, uh, if you look at the categories, for example, uh, the humanities uh, topics are more presented under society and culture, and there are also very popular formats there. For example, Geschichten aus der Geschichte, which is a popular German format done by two historians, is, yeah, it's a history, mm -hmm. which can be understood as a, as a, as a scientific discipline, I'd say. <laughs> Yeah, it was mentioned in the chat as well that there's a lot of history, at least to uh, the impression of, of Julian. Um, I think something that, that I didn't mention in, in my slides is that, or in, in my brief part, is that 
point you have to have your own podcast and then you're kind of into the frame that others have come up to in terms of categorizing the content that you yourself produced as a podcaster uh, that goes into the the problem that Nele mentioned as well because you might have like a humanities related topic in one episode and a hard uh, episode and the history and and, and education in general so it can be tough for you as a podcaster as well to categorize your content like that yeah and uh regarding the the, the platforms and stuff it's really i think uh, very important to introduce your audience to the idea of, of what podcasting actually is especially if you like um use uh address listeners who might not be so much so familiar with podcasts i mean to tell them we're on spotify it's probably very easy for them to find your show but if you ask them to install maybe a podcast app or something like that and then look for you ads there's a step too much you know people are really cozy or they convenient <laughs> they Uh, with that, uh, which explains why these uh, commercial platforms are so uh, so successful. They are a good uh, gateway, I think, to an audience who is not familiar with podcasting apps, uh, but they are not the only place, of course, where podcasting is happening. And there's a lot of conversation uh, to be have, uh, we could have about that. But um, looking at my clock, <laughs> I think um, I go on with uh, with my uh, third part, and we have after our short break. We also have a short slot for for comments and questions as well. So keep them, keep posting them, <laughs> so we can pick them up. Um, I think uh, if you think about content distribution and marketing, um, I think it's it's a good idea maybe to first defining what success means for you, because often I talk to people they want to know yeah what what is a good number of downloads and plays per episode, and this is really super depending on what kind of content you are presenting and what kind of audience uh, you are addressing. Of course, reach like log data and statistics, streams, downloads, um, subscriptions uh, can be a success um, element, I'd say, but it's really hard to compile all uh, the data, right? Because it's a, a centralized technology and you might get some information about place on your website or some statistics from spotify but you have to really merge these data to get a complete picture and then it's really hard to compare it to other formats right because oftentimes charts like chartable.com they are not as reliable they are not so transparent so you never know how they get to their data or how they these charts and rankings are um, done so reach is a yeah it's not a very good success uh, factor i'd say Another um, mm, mm, criteria for success um, can be engagement. So how much feedback do you get? The ratings people are giving you on Apple Podcasts, for instance, um, the quality and depth of comments. Um, you can call this an interaction rate, but I also uh, say that two or three very elaborate or long comments or an interesting conversation you have with your listeners via email can be a very um, very nice uh, and rewarding form of engagement i think for um for science podcasts um, or people who are looking into that they always want to know um, why should i do this It only costs me time. So the question of success in regard to relevance um, could be an interesting criterion. So how visible are you in certain communities? Um, how the impact uh, of your podcast can be relevant? Are you uh, able to build a community? Um, your podcast might even get some media coverage. So I think... Um, um, impact on that regard or outreach as many people call it can be something which can be achieved with uh, with podcasts as well so this can be a relevant factor and of course i think um, success for me is always also defined in the sense of a self-service yeah um, for one i 
campaign proof that I'm able to um, transfer knowledge to the public. Um, I can train my communication skills with that. Um, I can have some kind of independence if I do uh, it as a private project, um, in the, being independent from my institution, for example, or from the PR and marketing <laughs> efforts of my university. And I think it can be also, what is also very important that this can be very personally rewarding to, to have a, your own podcast. So these elements together, I think, make may give you an understanding how we can define success when it comes to podcasting. And these are can be very different. Um, maybe to uh, come to some more hardcore uh, information, <laughs> back to some hardcore information. I think what's often overseen is that podcasts are more than audio. There is a visual identity element to that and also the social interaction uh, component. And let me show you what I mean with that. Um, visual identity means that, yeah, audio is nice and great, but we also want to maybe have a nice cover or give our cool podcast some cool appearance, right? And here you see uh, two examples. On the left hand, those are covers for podcasts. And on the right side, these are episode covers. So for each episode, they are uh, having an episode cover, a picture uh, which depicts maybe um, what you are talking about in this episode. And these can be uploaded um, separately for each episode, at least in um, Podlove, it's really easy to do that. And of course, how you present your podcast to the world on maybe your website can also be relevant. I have this example of Pandemia, which is um, by 4000 Hertz, a German podcast, and they have a very nice way to present their episodes on their landing page. This is done professionally, I believe, but so you have get an idea on uh, some elements and how to nicely present um, your uh, audio content on, on a website so people are curious or yeah, it's, it's pretty engaging to have such a nice overview maybe. It's not a must. It's maybe in your first 10 to 20, uh, 1 to 20 steps to podcasting. Um, it's really more on the high end premium side of things, but uh, maybe a nice way to think more creatively about um, how you present your podcast online. This um, microphone podcast is a podcast by a graduate school. Um, I think sociology is uh, the main focus here. And you can see here, um, this is the page for the episode Lebenslauf. And you have here the player, which is actually the Podlove player. So here people can click and play, download uh, the episode, but uh, they also have a long text with credits, what the episode is about with uh, literature, which uh, has been referenced, which is really nice because we are still talking about science, right? Uh, people like to put some references and resources into that. And they also have the credits for the team. Yeah, the music, which has been used and stuff like that. So uh, websites for podcasts are really nice way to present all this information because when people listen to it on an app for for example, then they might be just focusing on the audio. But if they want to learn more, you can mention your extensive show notes in your episodes as well. So people are curious and want to check out the website as well. Another way to do it is uh, like the, or another example is Exploring Digital Spheres, which is by the Humboldt Institute in Berlin. This is an English, uh, English language podcast. And here you can see basically the same structure. The episode is uh, integrated as a player, which is the Podigy player. Podigy has been mentioned by Christian before. So they simply add uh, this on their normal web interface, so to speak, the player, and then put some show notes below. What they did, I'm not sure if I can play it now, um, but I sent you the link. They also produced a trailer. Um, for the first episode or for their podcast. So before they launched their first episodes, 
they put out a trailer which can really help you to um, to yeah to find listeners even before your first episode is out. So you might want to try that. And they also publish um, the podcast on YouTube as a playlist. So. And I want to give you an example how podcasts on YouTube, because we learned before that YouTube is a relevant uh, distribution channel, at least from the listener perspective, how that looks. Um, I want to show you with a German example um, from Underdogs, which is um, a podcast done at the University of Halle, um, done by students not professors, not doctoral students, but actual students, which is really nice, I think. How much metal do you produce a Kuh on a day? Circa 191 liters. Aha. And how much is that in the luftballon? So 75? So um, I'm stopping here just to give you an impression. So you have a, like a, a still, it's just a picture. Um, you have this cover uh, or the episode cover, um, which you can see here. And then you have this audio wave, which can be um, generated with different um, programs. And that's basically is it, that's the YouTube video, right? And they also publish it on, under a Creative Commons license, uh, this particular podcast, which is really nice because you can um, you can um, add this on YouTube. You can say it's a Creative Commons licensed video, um, but you could, could also use Vimeo or stuff like that. So once you have your audio, you can um, enhance it to a video with, with this kind of graphic. <laughs> Um, uh, Christian also mentioned uh, it might be important to choose your categories wisely so more people can find you. So depending on your kind of topic, you might want to take a look at the various kinds of categories which are available on iTunes. So might be strategic about this and a good way to um, reach people, um, yeah, let people find you. You can add your podcast um, on feed.de, which is a German podcast search engine. Simply take your RSS feed address and add them uh, here on tools. Um, the English pendant of uh, feed is listen note, notes. So if you have a podcast, um, yeah, go there and add, add it to these podcast search engines. So it's easier for people who are looking um, looking up your your formats or topics. Uh, Christian already mentioned Wissenschafts Podcast, which is a science podcast community. They are always open for new formats. So if you have a podcast, um, yeah, get in contact, contact with them. And of course, um, I mentioned it before, um, there are many ways how you can uh, use the sociability and socializing aspect of podcasts. And I mean, podcasts are web media, they are internet media, they are not only audio media, but they live in this uh, web um, uh, ecology, so to speak, and you should make use of that. And these are some examples here um, I put on the slides. Um, how to do that. Um, for example, here in the center, these two are screenshots from Instagram accounts from podcasts. So they use pictures, episode pictures, for example, and short uh, quotes to, to make the people more interested in these uh, episodes. Or here on the, um, what is it, left side? <laughs> this is one screenshot from, from, uh, from Twitter. It's also using a share pick with a quote, or you can use uh, Twitter, for example, to to, make, to do a poll before you do the recording. So these are nice ways to engage your audience and ask them to help you out with sharing the content. So social media are really good to promote your content, maybe show some making of pictures. So we are now here in the recording scenario X. So this is a really nice way to keep people engaged with your content. Um, social media are also a great way to, to, to 
promote this interaction uh, between hosts and audience, but also between listeners, which is really cool. And you can um, add some call to actions like give us your questions for our guests, um, give what kind of guests or topics should we cover, St that, stuff like that is really, uh, is really um, a nice way to yeah, to, to keep people uh, on your side, so to speak. And word by mouth actually is really very important. So um, if I like your podcast and you ask me to recommend it uh, to your friends, then I'll probably um, do that. Um, <laughs> uh, and um, yeah, this is really, uh, these are some elements you can use to, to um, yeah, ask people to help you out to get get the word out, so to speak. And there are many, many channels you can use. I'm not, uh, I did not, uh, I have uh, WhatsApp here. You can, of uh, course, um, have a, your own Telegram channel, for example, for your podcast as well, or other platforms you prefer. Um, a nice way to promote your podcast uh, on social media is to also build, uh, build these little video snippets, so-called audiograms, and I have an example here. You can do this with tools like Headliner. Um, all you need is maybe a nice cover image and then your audio. Seit Trump und Brexit, also seit 2016, 2017 in etwa, erleben wir, dass die digitale Öffentlichkeit eben auf einer Medieninfrastruktur beruht, und damit meine ich nicht nur das Technische, also die Kabel und die Funkmasten, sondern auch sozusagen die, die Plattform mit ihrer Logik, ihrer Medienlogik, also dass die Öffentlichkeit auf einer Infrastruktur basiert, die ähm, nicht per se seit Trump und Brexit. Oh, sorry. <lacht> um, so, this was, uh, as you have seen, um, this is a video with subtitles. So, it can be shared without uh, the, turning the audio on, um, which is a nice service. And you can either do this using Headliner or I think uh, Forscher guys, they are using another tool, which I'm not aware of uh, what it's called like. But this is uh, really a nice way to to yeah to spark the interest of of, of listeners, but also other social media users um, to to present them something um, in advance, uh, so to speak, a trailer for your new episode. And another element which is not possible at the moment, uh, at least um, not right now, is doing live shows with your audi audience. Um, for instance, uh, Rise and Shine, which is uh, a society um, podcast, uh, they did a film screening with their audience. Um, the Green Line uh, from Berlinology, they did a they did a road trip where everybody listened to the podcast episode and they listened together, which is a nice way to to get to know your listeners and have some interaction with them and yeah, have some exchanges with them. And then we have uh, Methodisch Incorrect. I already said it. They are the rock stars of science and they have done, uh, I was an uh, eyewitness of shows of them like um, performing in front of 7,000 people or so, which is really not possible at the moment, but they are also going on tours, for example, and this is a really nice way to connect with your audience as well. can be done at every institution. You, you can either do it as a completely different show or you um, use it to produce uh, an episode for your podcast. And uh, one last slide for you. Um, if you're interested in talking with other people who are doing science podcasts, there is this yearly uh, mini conference or symposium, which is called Guns Ohr. And they use Sendegate, which is a forum for um, podcasters, a German forum. They use um, Sendegate.de to exchange new ideas and organize and stuff like that. So might be a nice way to get in contact with other podcasters because besides uh, marketing, besides, uh, let's say, traditional PR, like media are really important um, to, to get your format out. 
um, networking is really important. So you might want to get in contact with your um, with others, Skycom, aficionados, or other podcasts, or you do a podcast appearance about and talk about your format, or you use existing contact points to certain communities, newsletters, events, and stuff like that. And again, don't forget your audience. Um, invite your listeners to act as curators, so to speak, and feedback providers for your format. And these are some of the tips I have for you. Again, I will share my um, slides as well. And that's about it.